Today, we're gonna to talk about what makes a snowcross sled unique versus your basic consumer sled. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the ski. This is a CNA Pro Ski, specific for snowcross racing. What makes it specific is the very deep keel. Underneath, it's got ultimate traction for turning. On the inside of these skis, we have a, a surface fin that when you come in, it acts almost like a snow plow on the side and it helps apply side force, also to enhance cornering and your ability to have stability in the corners. From a driver's perspective, um, having the deeper keel on the ski is, you know, it's a huge advantage for us in the corners, especially when the snow is really soft. And it, also with the, with the side plate as well, it just allows you to come into the corner with a little bit more speed and be able to get more grab coming around the corner. And, um, you know, our sleds, the way that they're, they're tuned with suspension and everything, um, they'll tend to push a little bit more in the corners. So having that extra side force there, it allows us to get around the corners quicker and hopefully get out of the corner in front of the people behind us as well. Moving our way back, we have A-arms. These are these braces we put on, help to keep the A-arms stable through suspension travel. If we hit a geode or an ice pocket and this A-arm wants to move around, it makes the ski do really weird things and it'll uh, want to eject the driver and make it very disturbing to drive the machine. You know, without that, uh, there's been a few instances where I've actually folded that over and I don't really feel comfortable riding on it now. So um, just having that kind of bracing is uh, very important for us because it just makes it a lot more stable and uh, makes us as drivers more comfortable as well. So the next big difference is the handlebar control area. You have your brake lever, master cylinder. We run a multi-position brake lever. Gets the driver so they can put the brake lever in any position they need it for best comfort. This is our pipe heat button. As we hit this, it changes the ignition timing and uh, helps to increase the pipe heat for hole shots. We run a billet aluminum throttle lever. Has a heater in it also. We have to run billet aluminum ones because if we run plastic ones, our drivers will snap them off and once the throttle lever breaks, it's game over. In the middle, it's a very important piece. It's a vibration dampening clamp. So if you were to run straight without that, you get a lot of vibrations that come through the handlebars and it can make the driver's arms numb. With this piece, it helps to isolate that, minimizes vibration coming through the handlebars and helps their arms last a lot longer for the entire race. You know, the brake lever, the throttle, uh, everything is positioned in a way that makes it most comfortable for me as a driver. Also, the angle of the handlebar riser, uh, for me, that makes a big difference. I am a taller driver, so I like my handlebars a little bit more rolled back. Um, so that's just you know, kind of a comfort thing for me. So another key piece to the handlebars is the handguards that we run. Uh, we run the Rock Speed FX handguards, and personally, for me, I like to run the foam. Whenever you're in a corner, uh, your your sled's at a different angle compared to the ones that are uh, roosting you in front of you. So um, I don't like my hands to get wet. Key piece for us is to keep our hands warm while we're racing. The one thing we do have in common with consumer-based snowmobiles is our clutches. We all run CVT clutches. Our biggest difference is the amount of tunable parts that we have. It's infinite. The springs, the weights, the ramps, belts, belt hardnesses, different durometers, manufacturers. The amount of parts is endless and we test every one of them. So based on how the clutching is feeling on the racetrack, I'll come in and relay what I'm feeling to the mechanics and tell them whether it's too heavy, too light, um, and if we need a little bit more power in between the holes or coming out of corners and stuff like that. Uh, we'll take that information that I'm giving them and they'll also download the information from our data system and look at it on the computer and then we'll use that to make a change for the next race. So probably the largest difference between a consumer sled and a race sled is our GPS-based data acquisition systems. Right here is an antenna that's connected to a data logger mounted underneath the seat. And this little antenna will re record every bit of track position and then the recorder will log any of the engines, uh, tuning, the files that we have in, throttle position, lateral G's, acceleration G's, anything we want to do from shock telemetry, engine RPM, temperature, pipe temperature, anything we need is all on board and at the end of a race or every time this thing comes in off the track we're able to download and dissect and pick out every little bit of information we need to be better. A major aspect on every one of our race sleds is the foot positioning. These foot stirrups highly crucial to keep the driver comfortable and to keep their feet intact with the running boards at all times. So I like to run my foot stirrups uh, farther back than um, some people. Just because of my height, I like to be able to get the leverage when I'm casing a bump or anything like that. Um, I also like this side protector too, just for um, when you land a little bit off camber, uh, it's pretty easy for your foot to be able to slip off the side of the running board. Uh, and just having this there 
um, adds a little bit of extra protection um, and keeps your foot from falling off and, and jabbing the ground and possibly hurting your knee a little bit or even protecting you from another sled that's coming into the side of you as well. So the brake system on a race snowmobile is very robust compared to what you would find on a consumer based model. This is a four piston caliper built for the demanding grueling temperatures and conditions that we race in. Because of the snow, we see a lot of moisture and water content, which gets absorbed into brake fluid, and over time deteriorates the brake fluid, losing brakes or having brake fade. There's times you'll actually see this brake rotor glowing red, and when the glowing happens and you get snow mixed on there, you get steam, and the steam is what dissipates the brake fluid, causing failure. The average consumer probably goes through a set of brake pads once every two to three years. We go through a set of brake pads once a day at least, depending on snow conditions and how much driver comfort we're having. So the brakes are a really important feature on the snowmobile, um, just for rider comfort and for actually being able to get through the bumps as well. If you have a really peaky track and um, if you don't have brakes that work very well that actually make a difference when you squeeze the brake in the air, um, then it's hard to be able to find a rhythm and to actually have fast lines through there because you're always you know, clipping the top of the jump and not being able to get down in the holes uh, quite like you'd like to. And then it actually messes everything else up on the snowmobile as well as far as suspension, clutching. I tend to drag my brakes a lot uh, when I'm riding. Um, I don't necessarily go through a lot, but um, I'll always have my finger on the brake just to, it, it helps um, balance the sled through the bumps. So you're on the gas, on the brake, and just trying to find that fine line of keeping the sled straight. I personally like to run a harder seat um, just because the way my riding style is, I like to seat bounce in between the holes uh, and when I need a little bit of extra pop. Uh, compared to a softer foam which comes stock on the sled, um, I feel like it, it takes up a lot of energy when you are seat bouncing. So uh, with a harder seat, it allows you to get the force to the skid um, sooner and gets more pop out of the suspension as well. Although today's suspension systems on consumer snowmobiles come out of the box ready to go and very competitive, our ones built for racing need to be able to just be a step above and have those capabilities to do the fine tuning on the days when we need it most. We have low speed, high speed, rebound, and this is an air shock. So we can change the air pressure in here, whatever we need to reach ultimate comfort and support on the skis to keep us from bottoming out. So although a consumer based sled may come with more of a soft and a plush rear suspension setup. A racing setup is more of a, a sturdy, rigid setup. And we get that from different spring rates or by having our shocks develop differently. On all these shocks, we can tune them infinitely to get them exactly where we need them to be, which is very important for everything we do. So one of the main things that we can test on our snowmobiles is the suspension. So um, getting it fine tuned and adjusting the clickers the way that we need them to be, um, a lot of it has to do with the way that the riders ride the snowmobile. So I ride my snowmobile a little bit different than other riders. So my suspension is gonna be set up a little bit different than what other people run as well. It gets to the point where one click, two clicks, they actually do make a really big difference on how it feels through the bumps. Um, and we're just constantly trying to test and get that as good as we can. So those are just some of the things that we have to do to get a consumer sled ready to hit the racetrack.